Good morning to everyone. Um, well, somehow I'm feeling like a vulnerable group here because I'm um, the one that represents early childhood education. And you know, it's not real, re even real education for some countries. <laughs> so um, I will talk about how the early childhood teachers were, were dealing with the um, pandemic and the other crisis situation. And as Anna um, already said, I'm coming from Croatia. So beside, at the same time when the world was experiencing COVID pandemic, we have a two really huge earthquakes in Croatia. And really hu huge. So beside that crisis, we also have a crisis by our own. And uh, what I will talk about, how the early childhood teachers were dealing with that, especially I'm mentioning because as you may see, well, early childhood education is not a compulsory education, not in many countries. We have like one year before school or maybe in some countries uh, two or three years, but not for a whole period from the children start by the age of one uh, until the pri they start primary school. So the regulation that were very clear for ed primary school education, for, for example, was not so clear for uh, early childhood teachers. So that is the thing that um, we try to discuss with them and I have to see I have to see a bit like this. Okay, so uh, that that was the one idea why why we are talking about early childhood teachers as separate from the other teachers. And another is uh, that 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 there was no equal working environment because if you are working as a teacher in primary school, you can just say, okay, we will do the online classes, but you cannot do the online classes in early childhood education because children are still there, parents are still there, and you have to work. So there was uh, several challenges to that, and I think that um, maybe some of you experienced it as a parent or maybe as, as a professional, how to deal with it. And for example, the work organization was, well, you know, we will still work, but you cannot let children to play with an, one another. You know, you have like a squares and one child in each square. Did you try to do it with toddlers? Not to mess with other toddlers? It's practically impossible. So that was the one of the demands. And they, they were also, the children was exposed to different type of education. For example, if they stay at home, you know, the working from home, which was really good idea in the beginning, so you don't have to dress up, you don't, you can drink your coffee and work easily, but not when you have a toddler or early childhood, early years child around you, because you know they don't know that you are working from eight to, to four, for example. So that was also the challenging, and you know the digital environment. Um, uh, recently, Sweden say that they will ban. Uh, electronic devices from early childhood education. I mean, we all know that uh, you cannot give a three-year-old a tablet and expect that that will be the education for a day. So all of these were somehow influencing the work of uh, early childhood teachers and of course causing them stress. And um, y you know, if you don't have like need for uh, electronic, um, assessment or something like that, you really don't have a competence. You, you didn't try even, you didn't have to try. So everything was very new for teachers. And um, their workflow was, for example, they have to work. And you cannot work with masks or something like that with the toddlers or, or uh, children in early years. So everything was very pressure, uh, giving pressure to them. And no one actually deal with early childhood teachers because, you know, uh, especially people uh, who are uh, front, in front line workers, they have to go to work. M doctors, nurses, I don't know, people in, in shops. So you have to work and no one support you. So that was the crucial question and, and we tried during our project in Educatore, we actually uh, somehow deal with the early child, future early childhood teachers as well, so students, because it's very, as I said, very specific field of education in, in order to organize work. So 
and there was a question, who is actually responsible for well-being of educators in early childhood education? Are those educators by, the, by themselves? or maybe policies, because, you know, the policy, especially in Croatia, and I know that it was similar in other countries, was having, yes, you have some kind of uh, document that show that you have to work like this or that, but no one actually tried to understand what is happening in early childhood education. So we try to find what the educators think about it. So we ask them, how did you feel? Because we are talking about, about well-being, so how did you feel during this period? And um, what do you have any type of support? Who was the support? And what challenges were at, at the mom th this beginning, and not just beginning, th but after? And finally, did you learn some lessons from that? What did you take up with you for the rest uh, of your professional life? So just briefly about the method we make uh, uh, through virtual focus groups. Of course, it was very virtual. Mm -hmm. And we have 21 uh, preschool uh, teachers. We try to make regional uh, representation across the uh, Croatia, which is very diverse. And we try to uh, invite people with different um, uh, work experience. Because, you know, the, they will say, uh, you know, the, the newest generation, they are very familiar with the um, digital environment, so they can do it. And, you know, someone who is working for 30 years, it's not so familiar with computers, so probably there is some issue. Uh, I, I will just uh, give you a pick up. The, there was no issue. It was the same for, for the youngest and for the older. So what we what they say? I will just quote here. So basically, nothing nothing was allowed. However, I gradually returned to materials and somehow, like a boiled frog, when you cook it, you cook it, and it doesn't even realize it's cooked. And that's how it was with boiled frogs. Everything actually returned to how it was. So what does it mean? It means actually that teachers at the first moment just stop to do everything what they knew. And then just say, well, no one actually pay attention of us. So we will give more materials. I mean, we do, the colleagues is here, we do research on play during the COVID. You know, it was just a plastic, and we all know that we are much better feeling in environment like this. And it was everything that you can disaffect. And, you know, children doesn't like to play just with that material. So we just put it. And what, as a surprise, no one noticed. So we just keep putting other materials. So we just act actually <laughs> like a boiling frogs to, to the policies. and. What, is, what was very interesting, but not so different in any other occupation, I would say uh, they all stated that they were very afraid. Uh, and not just for the children, but for their own families. Because you work all day with children from 20 different families, 20 different backgrounds, and you come home to your own family, and you have to act like nothing happened. So they, they actually... Um, say that the worst thing was fear and uncertainty. What is happening? I can share with you that I was very afraid that I, I, I should stop travel at the moment. That was my, not my health, the travel was <laughs> the, most, uh, the thing that I, I was worried about. So probably uh, some things that they used to was so uncertain to them. And all of them said that we didn't have anything, how to do, how to proceed with the uh, teaching in early childhood, what to, what to give children, how can we um, give support to parents? And you have to talk with parents and you don't see the parent because, you know, they just give you child over the fence. No talking, masks, you don't know who is that. And how can we be good teachers if we cannot do our job as we used to? And on the other hand, uh, since the schools were closed and everything was online, you know, the kindergartens was the only educational institution at the moment that were open. So they say, yes, we have a sense of importance. Finally, someone see that we as teachers are professional as well. We are very important. 
So that was the other sign, a side of coin. They finally, in that difficult situation, find that someone is actually noticing there are teachers that are, in Croatia, you, you don't call them teachers, you call them like aunties. So it's already in your uh, per perception of a profession when you call someone like this, we can discuss about that, how do you feel? So now, in this time of crisis, they feel that they are really valued. So they say, I felt powerful. Uh, and uh, we should uh, make more research after the COVID about that. And uh, then uh, we discuss how to support the educators. And unfortunately, they didn't have any support. Probably because no one has support at the, at the beginning. But when they compare with the primary school or secondary school education, they find mm, that policy and government and society especially society, was more supportive to teachers and to children in that period. And they didn't know how to, uh, how to deal with that. So on the other hand, they should act like a support. First of all, to children, because, you know, the children are still there and you have to empower children as much as you can. Then to parents, because parents were was in very difficult situation. And finally to society in whole, because if at the moment kindergarten stop working and teachers stop working, everything will fall apart. So they didn't have any support, but society <coughs> expects them to be supportive to, to all kind of to all groups of of um, of people. And of course, they have, they felt some challenges. As I already mentioned, because for early childhood educators, you don't need to work with your computers. You don't have to use digital environment every day. Yes, you can if you want to work on your professional development, but it's not mandatory. And it was a question of a competences. And regarding on the age of work experience, both, the youngest and the older has a very huge, um, af uh, af they, they were very afraid of, of using these tools for communicate with parents, you know, because mm -hmm. someone is watching. You don't know who is watching. You see the, t but, but maybe someone is listening behind. That's not very safe to talk about child. You know, better not to do it. So um, before that, they ban like uh, communicate platforms like Viber groups or WhatsApp groups, it is not allowed to share information about children. But now it was perfectly fine to do it. So how to ethically deal with that? And how to deal with, um, with the um, environment? When to do it? At your free time, at the evening, during the period when you are with the children? So that was a really huge challenges and pressing uh, uh, press, uh, stress to, to them. But after all, uh, I would say that they, they stated that they took something good. For example, there is no more excuse for someone not to come and discuss and talk with the teacher about the child. You cannot come to kindergarten. Well, we have uh, different platforms. We can talk. We can discuss about it. So we can share with you all information that you needed. So on the other hand, you know, the, the professional uh, uh, activities for development are very expensive sometimes. Well, no need. We have uh, webinars that are usually free, and you can access them whenever you want. You don't have to spend a euro to travel to somewhere. You can just be there. So they see, well, that's a good thing. Now we are more and more oriented to our webinars or, or online workshops, and, and we can even talk with the, the uh, colleagues around the world about the same topic that are interesting. So they widen their professional community. Um, of course, they enhance their uh, digital competences because they have to do it. And somehow what I would stress as most important, they, they finally find what is the profession of early childhood teachers are and how important they are. And they should be very proud to be early childhood teachers and not just aunties that are playing with the ch just playing with the children. So uh, they also recognize that they need support. 
they can be support one to another, but they need support from society, from policy, from uh, from the peers, from everyone. And mm. so, after the th this crisis situation, they took something that is good, and then f they conclude that some good things happen, and some of them say, "Well, you know, the the this situation pushed me to learn, to find." To, to connect with someone and to know that it's okay to need a support. We are not super here, so that will be um, conclusion from all this. So we don't need to be a superheroes. It's okay not to be okay. And we should acknowledge that we as a profession are as vulnerable as some other profession, as as anyone in the society. So we should seek for support. It's not something that we should be ashamed of to ask for support and try to find someone to help us. And that mm, we have limitation. <laughs> if we are aware of that, we will work to overcome this. So while we strive for excellence, uh, I, I would just say that uh, from, from this research, we actually find that during the conversation, they ju just conclude for themselves. Well, it's good to say we don't know everything. We need someone to help us. And that, if we say so or do so, it doesn't mean that we are less professionals. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was most excellent and excellent timekeeping. We have ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes to comment or to to have any questions to our uh, keynote speakers. So, if any one of you would like to raise a question, then I will be a fairy with the microphone. Yes. Thank you for two very interesting presentations. I have uh, two questions to Adriana Obert. <laughs> Adriana Obert. Yeah. Uh, you you, uh, you you were speaking about dialogic society uh, and the dialogue be between sociology in particular and, and society on the other hand. And uh, while listening to society is a part of our job, and th th that's obvious that in this dialogue uh, we, we are listening, listening to society, do you think that society are also l interested in listening to, to so what sociologists have to say? And another um, thing that I would like you to delve into is um, that uh, along the uh, democratic characteristics of society, there is a, a kind of menace that goes with the dialogue. And the menace is uh, populism, and actually the, the political parties that are the best in listening to, to society are the populist ones. So do you think... W what do you think about um, um, possible uh, re possible uh, uh, reduction of of the risks uh, involved in, in in listening, in very close listening to to, to, to the, the society by the by the people in power by, by the authority? Mm -hmm. the, the good example in Poland is uh, and this connects the the, the, the the links the second presentation is what happened in education in Poland, with, 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 which is uh, uh, underfunded at, um, at the moment because uh, um, uh, the government decided to put large subsidies into social tra direct social transfers to parents, uh, while at the same time schools and teachers have been underfunded throughout the years. So this is one of the examples where, where listening to society and doing what society wishes can actually bring the costs. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, these are a very important two questions. So thank you for raising these two questions. Uh, the first one, uh, if citizens are interested in listening about, uh, uh, about what from sociology and sociology of education uh, we can say. I, I say yes. I say that citizens and especially vulnerable groups are really interested, but not in anything that we can 
contribute, just in the contributions that from sociology can be um, important and can impact in the improving of their lives. Uh, I mean, not all the things that we produce uh, it's, uh, it has this impact. So um, when they are not interested, it's because it's not aligned to these aims that are a democratic, as I stated before, a democratic um, pr procedure in, in deciding the aims that society has. And also when uh, it's scientific based, because um, not all the statements that from sociology, I'm, I mean a big, eh, the big sector, is based in, in, in evidences. So these are two criteria that when they are followed, uh, the citizens are really interested in what we can uh, contribute. And the other question, uh, I think it's also very, very important, and I go, I will answer in, in the same line, uh, in the same, yes, in the same sense. Uh, democratization means that uh, we, we need to, to share with people that think differently and because we are different, we are very diverse, diverse, no? So the, the definition of uh, democrat, democracy is diversity and uh, we can, um, uh, we, we can have uh, a risk of populism and, and how we can manage to avoid this risk. Um, for me, it's the same answer. No? It's uh, when we, the, the, the dialogue is based on scientific statements, not on what I think that you will uh, need, so, you know, uh, if not, I have not made um, a very serious research on that. It's not what I think. And what I think that you will like, and this is populism, I know that you will like this and you will buy my, my idea. So, no, it's what have been proved by science that it's really um, overcoming difficulties and overcoming or, or improving their lives. But it's already, already proved, evidence-based. So um, I think that um, in this dialogue, the evidence-based, it's, it's crucial. I don't know if I've been clear. If I don't know if you want to. What you, you have your comment. So just a comment for uh, uh, funding of education mm -hmm. and and to, am I right? Thank you. Okay, so I think we wrap this up because we need our well-being and a little break. Uh, cannot sit too long <laughs> and focus. Uh, we have two more uh, keynote presentations coming uh, in about 15 minutes. Uh, so please take a chance to enhance your well-being, uh, grab something to drink, uh, have a little walk around, and please come back here in 15 minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you.